Let me show you an app that I've created called Globop. It's a lot of fun and very educational, but on top of that, it'll change the picture that you have of our world. First thing that you do the first time you use Globop is you pick your language. There are 40 languages here. The language that you choose determines the language in which the Wikipedia articles and the map overlays are displayed. This is typically the opening screen that you see in Globop. It says random Globop, mind travel, departing now. Click the globe, good luck. So let's do that. We click the globe. And where are we? Well, the red dot indicates that we're somewhere in Southeast Asia. If we click the map button, we see that we are actually in Angkor Wat in Cambodia. Here's a Wikipedia marker. So if I click that, then we get information about this location. If I click this, it will take me to the Wikipedia article itself. Let me close it with this. Or if I click here, it would take me to the nearest photosphere. Photospheres are what Google calls the 360 degree panoramas that are part of Google Street View. But let's go back to the one that we were already looking at. So this looks very interesting and if you're familiar with Angkor Wat in Cambodia, you know that this is a very interesting site. So we're having a look around the panorama and then you may be familiar with these links from Google Street View. You can navigate the site by clicking these links which allow you to, as it were, walk through the location. That's one way to explore an area but there are other ways to explore a particular area in Globebop. Let's have a look at some of those. First, let's go to Map View. Let me close the Wikipedia info window and close also this window. Now, as I move around on the map by dragging it, you see that the center of the map, which is indicated by the crosshair, of course, changes location. Now, if I go back to Street View, what will happen is it will show me the nearest photosphere to the current center of the map. So that's another way to explore an area. You simply go into Map View, move the center of the map to where you want to go. There are other ways to explore as well. If we click the Search button, we do get a list of the Wikipedia articles that are nearby, locations that are within 10 kilometers of the current photosphere. And we can either visit the Wikipedia article or we can go to the nearest photosphere. But also there's a couple of interesting search boxes up here. This one will take us to the closest photosphere to whatever we type in here. This one will give us a list of Wikipedia articles concerning whatever location we type in. So for instance, if I type in Giza pyramids, then sure enough, as the red dot indicates, we are taken to the pyramids in Egypt. And if I go back to the search window and type in pyramids here. Then we get a list of Wikipedia articles concerned with pyramids all over the planet. You may have noticed that we haven't been seeing a lot of the typical Google Street Views that you see in Google Maps. Typically what you see in Google Maps are photos that Google employees have taken on the road. What we're viewing is the experimental version of the Google Street View database and about 90% of what you see in Globebop is photographed by individuals, not the Google Corporation. And what we see are places that are of importance to the people who have done the photography. We're seeing what they think is important on this earth. And that really comes across in the experience of Globebop.
as we repeatedly click the bop button, time and again, we see places that are way off the beaten path. Underwater, in the wilderness, on the beach, in awe-inspiring locations, in places you never thought that you would ever visit, even in caves, in the cities of the world, and the remotest mountaintops. Globebop expands your borders, expands your knowledge of the world. You don't just see places, you read about them in Wikipedia as well. It's a little bit like that game where we would spin the globe and see where we wound up. Only in this case, you get a lot more information about where you wind up. And you can use it for years. I've been using Globebop for two years in the programming of it, and every day it shows me places that I've never seen before. What other features does Globebop have? Well, there's a share button. If I want to share this particular view with a friend so that they see exactly what we're looking at right now, I click the share button and that gives me a URL. I copy that URL and I send that to a friend either via email or posting it on Facebook or whatever. And when the friend clicks that URL, then they see the exact view. In other words, they go to a web version of Globebop and can see what you were seeing. There are more buttons in Globebop. If we click here, then we see a, an info button that gives you info about the program, a forward button, because there's a back button as well, and then this home button, which is also present on Maps, which is useful to tourists. It takes me to the exact location that I am currently at. I'm going to zoom out a little bit. What we're seeing right now is Burnaby in Vancouver. That's where I am. And as I zoom out, we start to see some Wikipedia markers. And these Wikipedia articles are very useful for tourists who want to know what to visit. And the home button is present here as well. Of course, you can view not only satellite imagery, but the usual Google map type, and as well a map type that I created called Noir, which is useful for locating Wikipedia articles sometimes. Globebop is for a kind of virtual tourism mainly that shows you far more places than you could ever visit in your life. It expands your world and in these days of the global village, it shows you how very large that village is, but also makes it more familiar and a little bit more understandable. Check it out. Thanks for watching.